When you've got mates living all over the place, it's easy to forget how big the galaxy actually is. It's 100,000 light years across, which means that travelling at the speed of light, it would take you 100,000 years to get from one side to the other. I mean, you know, if your mates live even half that distance away, it's barely worth it, is it? But what if we could go faster than light? Well, we can't. And this isn't one of those things that scientists might discover in the future either. We really will never go faster than light. This seems weird. It's intuitive to think that speed is something we can always generate more of, all the way up to infinity. But a lot of intuitive things are completely wrong. Take this ball and this bat, for example. Together, they cost £1.10p. But the bat costs £1 more than the ball. So how much does the ball cost? Not 10p. We humans are essentially made of light. One half of it, anyway. If you take light and you pass it through a really strong magnetic field, then it splits in half, making matter and antimatter. And if you ever take the matter and you recombine it with the antimatter, then it will instantly turn back into light again. The explosive energy of your recombination with antimatter would create a fireball about 300 kilometers wide. The core temperature would be hundreds of times hotter than the sun, and the shockwave would wipe out most of the life on Earth. But, at least you'd be light, and now you can cross the galaxy in 100,000 years. Brilliant. But, you still couldn't go faster than light. Nothing made of energy can go faster than light, including light. In spite of all the evidence pointing to this universal speed limit, people are always trying to find things that break the rules. That's a really good thing. Science is all about pushing the boundaries of what we think we understand. And so several faster than light discoveries have been reported, but so far they've all been disproven. To avoid accidentally thinking that you've discovered something that goes faster than the speed of light during one of your daily experiments, it's important to understand that there are actually three different speeds of light. And I'm going to talk you through them all in a moment. One of them is pretty rubbish. One of them is the one we use all the time. And the other one, it's really the one that's basically right. Firstly, a cheeky recap of refraction. Imagine that your friend, lover, or personal assistant is drowning in the sea, and you've got to run across the beach and into the sea to save them. This might seem like the best route to take, but it isn't, because you're not a porpoise, you're pretty slow in the sea. So actually, this is the best route to take. Spend more time on the beach, take advantage of how much faster you are then, and then, turn into the sea. Light behaves similarly. It can't think for itself, but somehow it always knows the shortest route to take in terms of time. So, if you shine light through glass, light travels a lot slower through glass, so it bends into it like you bent into the sea, and then it bends out the other side again. So what goes on in this material? I mean, this is a piece of bread, but let's pretend it's a different material called a metamaterial. This is a material that actually exists. So when light goes into this, it bends like this. And this is really weird. It's bending away. It's as if it's actually going faster than the maximum speed of light outside the material. It's going faster than light. This is one of the most compelling experiments to show something that seems to be going faster than the speed of light. But it's not what it seems. I'm going to use multicolored trains to explain it all because that is the standard. So the first of the three different kinds of speed of light is called front velocity, and that is the speed that the front of any light pulse actually goes. So it's like the front of the train. Imagine the train is carrying a message. That is the speed that the light can carry information. The second is called group velocity. So this is a measure of how fast the middle of the pulse moves. So the problem is, is that there are some materials that actually destroy the back of a light pulse as it's moving through. And so the middle of the train appears to move forwards, even though the train itself is not actually going any faster. So this has led to quite a few reports of things that go faster than the speed of light, but they actually don't. The third is phase velocity, and this is the really interesting one. So this is the speed that the actual peaks of electromagnetism in the light are moving. It's like the speed that the carriages are moving. And the really amazing thing is that the carriages don't actually have to move at the same speed as the train. So in the metamaterial, the carriages actually speed up and go faster than the light itself. And this makes the light bend away, as if it's got faster. But the light hasn't got faster at all. If anything, the front velocity has actually slowed down. Here's another material. It's bread, again. But let's pretend that it's a negative metamaterial. So in this one, 
the light goes in and the carriages slow down so much that they actually start traveling backwards. They race backwards so fast that if you look at the pulse of light, it actually looks as though the whole thing is going backwards. But it's not, it's still going forwards. So there you have it. If you want to travel at light speed, you have to become light. You've got to come in. And when you are light, you can't get any faster. That's it. Don't be greedy. Thanks for watching. Hit share and deliciously subscribe for more. Toodles.